Friedrich Wilhelm Murnau was a German film director, producer, and screenwriter. He is regarded as one of cinema's most influential filmmakers for his work in the silent era. Murnau's first directorial work premiered in 1919, but he did not attain international recognition until the 1922 film The Sferatu, an adaptation of Bram Stoker's 1897 novel Dracula. Although not a commercial success owing to copyright issues with author Stoker's estate, the film is considered a masterpiece of German expressionist cinema and an early cult film. Nisferatu, a symphony of horror is a silent German expressionist horror film starring Max Schreck as Count Orlock, a vampire who preys on the wife played by Greta Schroeder, of his estate agent, played by Gustav von Wangenheim, and brings the plague to their town. The studio behind Nisferatu, Prana Film, was a short-lived silent-era German film studio founded in 1921 by Enrico Diekmann and occultist artist Alban Grau, named after a theosophical journal which was itself named for the Hindu concept of prana. Although the studio's intent was to produce occult and supernatural-themed films, Nisferatu was its only production, as it declared bankrupt shortly after the film's release. Grau claimed he was inspired to shoot a vampire film by a war experience, in Grau's apocryphal tale, during the winter of 1916, a Serbian farmer told him that his father was a vampire and one of the undead. Diekmann and Grau gave Henrik Galin, a disciple of Hans Heinz Ewers, the task to write a screenplay inspired by the Dracula novel, although Prana Film had not obtained the film rights. Various names and other details were changed from the novel, including Count Dracula being renamed Count Orlok. Although those changes are often represented as a defense against copyright infringement, the original German intertitles acknowledge Dracula as the source. Even with several details altered, Stoker's heirs sued over the adaptation, and a court ruling ordered all copies of the film to be destroyed. However, several prints of Nosferatu survived, and the film came to be regarded as an influential masterpiece of cinema and the horror genre. In 1838, in the fictional German town of Wisborg, Thomas Hutter is sent to Transylvania by his employer, estate agent Hernock, to visit a new client, Count Orlock, who plans to buy a house across from Hutter's own home. While embarking on his journey, Hutter stops at an inn in which the locals are frightened by the mere mention of Orlock's name. Hutter rides on a coach to a castle, where he is welcomed by Count Orlock. When Hutter is eating dinner and accidentally cuts his thumb, Orlock tries to suck the blood out, but his repulsed guest pulls his hand away. Hutter wakes up the morning after to find fresh punctures on his neck, which he attributes to mosquitoes. That night, Orlock signs the documents to purchase the house and notices a photo of Hutter's wife, Ellen, remarking that she has a lovely neck. Reading a book about vampires that he took from the local inn, Hutter starts to suspect that Orlock is a vampire. With no way to bar the door, he cowers in his room as midnight approaches. The door opens by itself and Orlock enters, and Hutter hides under the bed covers and falls unconscious. Meanwhile, his wife awakens from her sleep and, in a trance, walks onto her balcony's railing, which gets the attention of her friend Harding. When the doctor arrives, she shouts Hutter's name and can apparently see Orlock in his castle who is threatening her unconscious husband. The next day, Hutter explores the castle, only to retreat back into his room after he finds the coffin in which Orlock is resting dormant in the crypt. Hours later, Orlock piles up coffins on a coach and climbs into the last one before the coach departs, and Hutter rushes home after learning that. The coffins are taken aboard a schooner, where the sailors discover rats in the coffins. All of the ship's crew later die, and Orlock takes control. When the ship arrives in Wisborg, Orlock leaves unobserved, carries one of his coffins and moves into the house that he purchased. Many deaths in the town follow after Orlock's arrival, which the town's doctors blame on an unspecified plague caused by the rats from the ship. Ellen reads the book that Hutter found, it claims that a vampire can be defeated if a pure-hearted woman distracts the vampire with her beauty and offers him her blood of her own free will. She decides to sacrifice herself. She opens her window to invite Orlock in and pretends to fall ill so that she can send Hutter to fetch Professor Bulwer, a physician. After he leaves, Orlock enters and drinks her blood, but the sun rises, which causes Orlock to vanish in a puff of smoke. Ellen lives just long enough to be embraced by her grief-stricken husband.
Nesferatu has been noted for its themes regarding fear of the other, as well as for possible anti-Semitic undertones, both of which may have been partially derived from the Bram Stoker novel Dracula, upon which the film was based. The physical appearance of Count Orlok, with his hooked nose, long claw-like fingernails, and large bald head, has been compared to stereotypical caricatures of Jewish people from the time in which Nosferatu was produced. His features have also been compared to those of a rat or a mouse, the former of which Jews were often equated with. Orlok's interest in acquiring property in the German town of Wisborg, a shift in locale from the Stoker novels London, has also been analyzed as preying on the fears and anxieties of the German public at the time. Murnau was friendly with and protective of a number of Jewish men and women throughout his life, including Jewish actor Alexander Granik, who plays Nock in Nisferatu. Murnau, being a homosexual, would have been presumably more sensitive to the persecution of a subgroup inside the larger German society. As such, it has been said that perceived associations between Orlok and anti-Semitic stereotypes are unlikely to have been conscious decisions on the part of Murnau. Murnau later directed the film The Last Laugh, as well as a 1926 interpretation of Goethe's Faust. He emigrated to Hollywood in 1926, where he joined the Fox studio and made three films, Sunrise, For Devils, and City Girl. Murnau traveled to Bora Bora to make the film Taboo with documentary film pioneer Robert J. E. Flaherty, although disputes with Flaherty led Murnau to finish the film on his own. A week before the successful opening of Taboo, Murnau died in a California hospital from injuries sustained in an automobile accident. In July 2015, Murnau's grave was broken into, the remains disturbed and the skull removed by persons unknown. Wax residue was reportedly found at the site, leading some to speculate that candles had been lit, perhaps with an occult or ceremonial significance. As this disturbance was not an isolated incident, the cemetery managers were considering sealing the grave. His skull has not been recovered since.